Hey, boys and girls, welcome back to Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. In the last episode, we continued our challenging climb to the top of Sinnoh's Gym Challenge, taking on the Man of Steel himself, Byron, the father of Rourke, as well as adopting the use of fossil-type Pokemon as a signature Pokemon, just like his son, each having one half of Sinnoh's fossil duo. But, with another gym completed and conquered, we found out that something weird is going on at Lake Verity due to some sort of explosion happening in the area huge enough that it caused an earthquake on the opposite side of Sinnoh. So the question remains, what will we find once we get to Lake Verity? With Barry, only time will tell. So with that being said, we continue our adventure today. And honestly, with quite a cliffhanger with everything going on, since we did go to Iron Island after learning all that. But, as you can see, we actually kind of changed up our team here, because we actually have a little Munchlax now. I went down in the Grand Underground, and I found some pretty unique Pokemon um, that I'm surprised I haven't found yet in the base game, which is weird. But yeah, I found a nice little uh, Munchlax down there and named him Clayton. But, um, and if you're wondering why I named him Clayton, I named him after the gym leader from Black and White, if you guys are wondering the name. But, uh, yeah, we have Clayton here, and we also have, uh, Morrigan, which is, um, our little Murkrow that I found down in the Grand Underground as well. But, um, I actually got a Leftovers from Munchlax, which is pretty nice, so now we actually have that. And as well as, uh, that, I finally found the Soothe Bell. So the Sooth Bell was on a route that we never actually went into in video, which I'm surprised, just because there was no ne real need to go through that route, just because we had the ability to fly at that point to get back to Fantina's uh, little place in Hearthome. But, um, yeah, there's a little mansion that you can find the Sooth Bell in, which is pretty nice. I didn't do anything in the route, so if we ever want to, we can go back there and there might be something there. But, uh, yeah, I only went there for the Sooth Bell, to be completely honest. But, um, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. So, now we have, now we have a Munchlax, and now we have a, just in general, um, the good old Murkrow, which is pretty nice. And because we do have those two, we should probably look at both of their, uh, Pokedex entries, just in general, because it would make a lot of sense. So first off first, let's do Munchlax since that one is definitely going to be pretty easy because Munchlax is specifically from Sinnoh. So Munchlax, Big Eater Pokemon, type normal, 2 foot, 231.5 pounds. Wow, I didn't actually realize he was 230 pounds. It wolfs down its weight and food once a day, swallowing it whole with almost no chewing. And then we also have good old Murkrow. Oh, in perfect. <laughs> They're right next to each other. Murkrow, the darkness Pokemon. Type, dark flying. One foot, eight inches. About four points, well, it's 4.6 pounds. I was going to say 4.5 because I usually just do it by fives. But 4.6 pounds. It is believed that seeing this Pokemon at night will bring about ominous occurrences. And actually, fun fact. Murkrow is actually from the Johto region, even though it actually is more popular due to the, just in general, from Diamond and Pearl games. So I thought I should mention that as well. But uh, with that being said, let's finally head over to Lake Verity, since it looks like we're perfectly fine to actually go in here now. There were some scientists blocking it off before, or Lake Valor. <laughs> I don't know why I got that mixed up, but let's be honest here, there's so many lakes here that you kind of get mixed up. Also, was that a lava crater? Huh. Okay, then. Well, it's still it's still one of the lakes, to be honest, even if I did mess it up. But uh, let's see what Team Galactic is doing here. Uh-huh. Next stop, Lake Verity. Oh, well, there you go. Lake Verity's still on the list. The closest thing to civilization out there is that um, town Twinleaf. We can roll in there completely unopposed. Okay. Also rude. And poor Magikarp. Jeez, all the Magikarp are out of the water. And Magikarp is weakly flopping about. Actually, I just realized, I'm pretty sure this was the lake. Huh. Jeez, this definitely doesn't look good. Would you like to join the Magikarp and flop around in the mud? Um, no, but we could definitely put you in the mud, though. 
And actually, I think this is the first time we've actually fought off with a female Team Galactic member for the Grunts. I'm actually quite surprised about that, just because, yeah, we've literally been fighting all the male guys, but this is the first time we've actually seen a lady in the group. Huh, that's weird. But, uh, to start us off, let's definitely go out with Clayton here, because, well, let's be honest here, he should be perfectly fine on his own. I don't think it's gonna be like anything like with like the baby, baby Pokemon like Budu or anything like that. The thing is, is Munchlatch actually can do quite a lot on his own, just, just to be honest. So yeah, he's got some decent stats, let's be honest here. So he'll be, be, he'll be perfectly fine no matter what. So Clayton will definitely be good. But level 43 for Weston, cool, cool, cool. But um, yeah, the reason why I wanted to swap things up is because I was looking at stats and although we will definitely more than likely bring Mozart back out at some point, I noticed that Bugs was actually quite severely weaker compared to the rest of our team and was just falling off completely, which is a little unfortunate, but at least we got to low punny before we eventually had to drop Bugs, and Bugs did come in handy at some points for the fact that we did throw on some fighting type moves and stuff like that. But I feel like I did bring up that I wanted to use a Snorlax so like way back when we first um, were talking about the honey situation. And I, I believe that we were supposed to get a Munchlax through honey b before, but I'm pretty sure due to the Grand Underground being different, I think that's actually the only way to get Munchlax. So that makes things easier, honestly. But yeah, that's definitely good because I did bring up that I wanted to Munchlax, so it's definitely good that we actually finally found one. Because <laughs> I didn't do any real searching inside the Grand Underground until like literally like in between last episode and this one. So I'll definitely say it's definitely nice to see that there's some pretty good Pokemon down there. And it seems like there's definitely a lot of exploration that you can do. And I'm wondering if there's going to be more Pokemon that unlock, because there's different areas that are spliced off from each other, if you look at the map down there. Um, overwhelming? I guess, yeah, he got overwhelmed by my good old, good old Clayton here. <laughs> sorry, but not sorry at the same time. Also, how's the mud? I played you for a child and paid a stiff price for my arrogance. However, you're much too late. Team Galactic has already found the sunken island under the lake. And the Pokemon that slumbers there, well, where do you think it is now? Okay, so you already found one of the the lake spirits then, is basically what you're telling me. Also, there's two directions we can go. We can either go down or we can go up here. wonder what's so- oh my goodness, that's a lot of Magikarp. Uh, hey, what's up? Even Team Galactic has no use for Magikarp. Worthless, all of them. Um, until you, all of these evolve into Gyarados and uh, throw you into the air. Uh, I'll definitely say that one, and it, and it seems like Magikarp evolved after, you know, getting mad. So, uh, let's be honest here. Probably not your smartest idea, to be honest, be, to be messing with them. We sent off the Galactic Bomb. Its blast force was um, phenomenal. Hmm. Probably the same uh, grunt we saw earlier when we were dropping off the old charm to Cynthia's uh, grandma. So probably that same Galactic Bomb that we heard about then. So those things are strong, that's for sure. And good thing we didn't let them set that off uh, at the mural site, because that would definitely not have been a good thing for that town, let's be honest here. That could have been really, really bad, because Let's be honest here, we didn't actually take them to, you know, actually set something like that off, to be honest. We just beat them up and then forced them to leave town. But, uh, apparently they're definitely a lot less, uh, you know, kidding around than we per than we originally thought. But definitely a little bit of poison could be a little bit of a problem here. But it's going for Crow Gunk. We have Psychic type on our Munchlax here. Well, not specifically a Psychic type Pokemon, but we do have Zen Headbutt, so we can definitely use that to our advantage. And because it's a Fighting Poison type, Zen Headbutt is actually going to do a lot of damage here. So Krogunk, sorry, but there's literally no way you're going to be staying up from that one. <laughs> yeah, he definitely had no chance. 
level, almost level 45 for Roselia there, and just Carmen in general. Your Pokemon attack with um, phenomenal power, 1,700 for a normal battle without a amulet point is actually pretty nice. And actually talking about Carmen, I was actually supposed to do something for you guys. So, at the end of Iron Island, once you actually are about to leave, after we, we met with Riley and we said goodbye to Riley after we got the egg, apparently if you go on that lift, there's actually a shiny stone at the end of the place. So, uh, honestly, with the fact that we do have this, let's just use it right now. Because Carmen, I think, is perfectly ready for it. So, let's do it. <laughs> So Carmen's finally evolving. It's been a while. It took us a while to get to Roselia in the first place. And honestly, we've been in Roselia for quite some time. So I think it's about time to get a Roserade. And finally finish off that evolutionary line that's honestly is definitely going to be good for our good old Carmen in general. Because Roserade is really, really good in my opinion. So with that being said, congratulations. Your Carmen has now evolved into a Roserade. <laughs> yep, it has. But here we go. Roserade, the Bokeh Pokemon. Grass Poison, about 3 foot tall, 32 pounds. It attracts prey with a, with a sweet aroma that downs it, with th then downs it with thorny whips hidden in its arms. Which is actually kind of terrifying. But uh, yeah, it's definitely good to just have that in general. And because of the fact that we are poison, let's just play it safe and get the poison off of us. Because the poison honestly did more damage than anything else. Also, I just noticed something. Clayton has more HP than all the rest of our Pokemon, and he's technically a baby. Huh. Okay, then. Well, I'll definitely take that. <laughs> I did say Munchlax is definitely, you know, a normal Pokemon under, uh, under everything, even if it is, you know, you have to evolve it into a Snorlax. And honestly, just in general, it's pretty good on its own. But here we go. On behalf of our boss, I'll punish you for denying Team Galactic, or defying Team Galactic. Well, technically we denied them a couple times, so both technically work. But, uh, yeah, that was definitely defying Krogunk again. They really like their poison types, so this confirms that for sure they're more focused on the poison type Pokemon. Which is different because of the fact that, uh, well, no, Team Rocket used poison types too, didn't they? So, I guess it's, no, actually not all the, all the games, because you have Team Flare where they used all fire types mostly. So, honestly, it's similar to Team Rocket in a way. But the thing is, is Team Rocket also used dark type Pokemon, which Team Galactic seems like they don't use whatsoever. But Dust Tox, that should be bug poison type. The only thing is, is our Zen Headbutt still does decent damage. Hmm, interesting. Okay then, well, go for it then. <laughs> and he tried to use Poison Powder. <laughs> well, that would have gave you a 100% chance of getting me poisoned, but I dodged it. So, sorry Dust Tox. Sorry Mr. Grunt. But both of you uh, definitely aren't hitting me with that. Level 45 for Carmen. Pretty good, pretty good. And Beautiful Eye. Okay, Beautifly, we are still good because the thing is, good old Clayton, I threw on Rock Tomb. So, yeah, we're still good. <laughs> All we gotta do is just use our like, nice little Rock Tomb here, do some Rock type damage to the bug typing, and maybe get rid of the Beautifly. Yep, got rid of them perfectly fine. Surprise that Team uh, Galactic is level 30, though, because of the fact that we went through a level 38 gym. So it's kind of weird that they're level 31, but uh, honestly, that makes things easier. Huh. I'm the one who got punished in the end. Yep, you are. <laughs> and you're definitely not getting rid of us. But the Soothe Bell's definitely getting some use right now. I want to take a look just to see if there's anything you might be missing here. Because I don't know what exactly is hiding in Lake Valor here. But, um, oh, you're not a fight? What do you want? Are you one of those nitwits we fooled into guarding the entrance? Nope. <laughs> that was one of the scientists, but now we found out that they were working for you. Um, bah. It doesn't matter. Who are you? Um, who you are. It's too late. To make a difference, things are going to get really interesting now. All the legendary Pokemon are going to be brought to our HQ in Veilstone City. 
Veilstone City, you say? Thanks for the, um, hints. And that person looks very, very, very specific. And they are indeed a commander. The mission is proceeding without a hitch. The boss should be pleased. Everything is it for... Everything is for everyone, and for the good of Team Galactic. Um, hello there. Uh, what's going on with you? I recognize your face. You do? We don't know who you are. You're the child who raided the Team Galactic building in Eternus City. Jupiter should ha be ashamed of herself being beaten by a child like that. But anything and anyone that opposes Team Galactic must be crushed. Even the very thought of an opposition will not be to tolerated. Okay then. Well, here we go. Commander number three. And he looks a lot more sinister than the other two, let's be honest here. But Commander Saturn. Okay. What do you got for a Saturn? <laughs> and you got a Kadabra. Okay. That's not too bad. The thing is, is technically this would be a little bit of a problem, but the thing is, is, oh, you're using Reflect. Okay, well, that's not too bad. You did half our physical moves here, but yeah, that didn't do anything for you. <laughs> and you're using Rain Dance? Why? Do you have any Water-type Pokemon? Because I don't see anything that would do for you, because, uh, I'm gonna be honest here, now that you just gave me Rain Dance, uh, and, uh, Weston is definitely gonna have fun here, cause, uh, Empoleon definitely loves water. <laughs> okay then, if you wanna play that game, we'll definitely play it. I would use Clayton here, but I'm gonna actually play this with, a, a smart little, um, bit of tactician here. Because water is definitely a water type's friend. So, uh, we'll take the rain in stride. But Toxicroak, okay. Definitely an interesting Pokemon. But the thing is... He's not going to have much of a... Oh, you have dry skin. Okay. Well, that's a little unfortunate. But why'd you make it rain if uh, your Toxicroak doesn't have, you know, anything to do with rain? But okay then. But let's see here. Other thing we can do here is we could go for Shadow Claw, I guess. I, th I was thinking that maybe we could take advantage of the rain, but it seems like that's a no, which is weird. So... Why does Kadabra have rain? It's odd. This is odd. And uh, because of the fact that uh, Weston's not having much of a... Oh... Wait, really? Huh. I've never used dry skin, so I did not know you... Okay, now that makes a lot more sense to me now. So, that's the reasoning. Okay. We can play, we can play two at that game. But the thing is, is what do we do about the poison typing here? We could go into Morgan here, and if you're wondering why I named um, our Murkrai Morgan, there's actually a reason for it. So Morgan is actually known as the god, um, the death god of victory, so I thought that would be a cool name for it. <laughs> but yeah, it definitely, I think it would fit it because, hey, I think that, uh, you know, a crow that definitely, you know, symbolizes quite a lot in that kind of thing. But, um, I think it would definitely work for it. But I think Air Cutter might be our favorite thing here. And also has Super Luck, by the way. So we have a higher chance of getting crits. Which is nice. Although Toxic is not going to help us too much. But it's still not the worst case scenario. It could be worse. The only thing is, is... Um, for... Our Super Luck. It would be nice to get anything to do with um, anything that can increase crits, because that would make things even better for us. Because that would make things uh, much more surfetched like wouldn't it? Just because I definitely do miss surfetched a little bit, to be honest. But the super luck is definitely nice to have. But level 43 for Alice, not bad whatsoever. And down goes the Toxicroak. Okay, so what's your signature Pokemon, uh, Saturn? Because, let's be honest here, we haven't seen it yet. And your Toxicroak is definitely fitting for one, but uh, you definitely... Bronzor. Okay, so Bronzor is your Pokemon of choice. Okay, Bronzor is a Psychic Steel-type. Obviously, um, not a Pokemon that's just going to be 
easy. But the thing is, is that technically it's not his signature because Bronzor is the first evolution. So, hmm, that's odd. So, unless he threw out his signature Pokemon out early, which is weird. But, uh, huh, okay then. Well, Bronzor is not much of a problem, but that would mean that your signature would be a Bronzong eventually. So, definitely not the best thing. But the reason why I threw this out is because the rain should stop in the next turn. Definitely, it's not good during the rain for Flamethrower. It's going to half the damage anyways. But the thing is, is the super effectiveness still doesn't really matter here. And the thing is, is Bronzor is not really going to do any damage to us. That's going to be too bad. Also, I thought... Oh no, is it right? I think rain's five turns, isn't it? So... We still have a little bit left of it, but it's not that bad. <laughs> we'll just use a little bit more power points to use a little bit of flamethrowers. And there we go. Okay, brain's gone. And sorry, Bronzor and uh, Saturn, you're definitely going down here. Also, I just noticed Saturn looks like his hair, hair makes him look like he has horns. <laughs> okay then. Well, Saturn, down you go, bud. And down you go, indeed. Hmm, you, my friend, are tough. I can see why you defy a Sue. <laughs> yep. And honestly, we're not letting you win. And, okay, that's some decent winnings. I'll take that. <laughs> Although we don't really need it as much, but I'll definitely take it. Hmm. Even I, a commander, only managed to buy us time. Well, that's fine. A child like you will never be able to stem the flow of time. Team Galactic will still get the three legendary Pokemon of the lakes. With their power, we will create an entirely new universe. By now, Mars should have captured the Pokemon of Lake Verity. Okay, then. So it seems like we definitely need to head over to Lake Verity, then. Since that's twice that we've heard about Lake Verity. <laughs> Even though I brought up Lake Verity earlier and got it mixed up with, t with Lake, Lake Valor. But the thing is, is we were tasked with going to Lake Verity, wasn't wasn't that the case? I'm pretty sure it was. Or was it Barry that was originally tasked with going there? And actually, is Lake Verity the... Yeah, the one that's next to our hometown. Okay. So it looks like we're going back to Twin Leaf Town. As well as, I think the final lake is all the way next to Snow Point. Yeah, Akadi. And I think... Actually, I'm surprised that they call it Akity Lake um, Point instead of Lake Akity. But, um, yeah, definitely that would be our final one to go to if they're going to all the lakes. So we'll definitely be heading to Snow Point very soon then. And that would confirm things for being where our next, like, case of action of where we want to go next. But because we are going back to Twin Leaf Town, might as well go see how things are doing over there. No reason not to, since... Honestly, we have to go there anyways. <laughs> so, might as well see how everything's going. And also, we can maybe get a heal here too. Since, that is definitely a thing. So, hey mom, long time no see. Or Johanna, right, was what we learned that her name was. Um, welcome home, Spooks. Are you, um, and your Pokemon healthy? Take a quick rest here. <laughs> yep, we'll definitely take a rest. And honestly, get a little bit of catch-up time. But, off we go. <laughs> Not much we could do there, but honestly, might as well say, like, you know, hi for a second, since we are in the area. But let's go see how Lake Verity is doing, since that is definitely our next place um, we need to visit. And apparently Mars is here. Oh, hey Rowan. Long time no see. Also, I'm surprised you're not in a Pokemon battle right now. Hmm, all spooks. What timing? Those Team Galactic Scoundrels are after the legendary Pokemon. You've got to help Dawn. Okay, we can definitely help Dawn out. Also, I'm surprised you're... Oh, he actually talks to him. That's funny. Hmm, how dare you. You misguided thugs. Hmm, spooks. Dawn needs your help. Can I actually fight you? Um, ow, ouch. What's with this old timer? Was he, was he beating him up or just grabbing him by his... Oh, that's a trainer. I thought that was a like a Pokeball or something. It is our mission to stall you. Sorry, but we gotta do our job. Okay, thankfully it made us fight both of them, I was about to say. Because, uh, I didn't mean to get into a one-on-one -on -one battle if it was a dual battle there. In order for us to bring peace to the world, we must control it. Oh, 
Okay. Well, no. <laughs> I don't think you guys would ever bring peace to this world if you're blowing things up willy-nilly without knowing about the local surrounding area and the Pokemon in the lake itself. Poor Magikarp put flying into the sky. I don't think that's a good thing. Um, but we do have Rock Tune here, so we can go for Silicone here. And then Carmen. Carmen, I want you to... I don't think Grass Knot's really good here for Glammeow. If it was, like, Perugly, then it would be a difference, because Perugly is a lot heavier of a Pokemon than Glammeow is. But, yeah, because it's not a Perugly, we can't really do that. But we can go for a level 44 for an Ella. That'll definitely help. <laughs> well, let's see here. Silicone... Okay, Silicone's going for Tackle. Okay, then. Well, but that's not really gonna help you. Also, why haven't you evolved your Silicone? It's level 32, would you put it in an Everstone on your Pokémon? That's kind of, uh, not the smartest thing. Level 32 Stunky. Okay. And a Glammeow again. What is with their... I just realized, why are they using Pokémon that should be evolved by now? Okay, Bulldoze actually isn't smart here. Actually, no, wait a minute. No, no, Bulldoze could be good. Yeah, go, go Bulldoze. I got an idea. What we're gonna do is because Ground-type moves can't hit Flying-types, let's actually just swap Carmen out for good old Morrigan here. Because the reason is, we won't get hit by it. And two, we can actually play- Oh, they thought Carmen was gonna hit and they tried to use Sucker Punch. <laughs> no attack for you. All you got is a growl off, and that's not gonna help you. We, lo we lose a bit, little bit of attack, though. But... It should be pretty decent. Yeah, that's really decent. Okay, not bad whatsoever. Okay, cool. And then speed fell for both of them. We should be faster now, I think. But the, that's definitely good for us in general. And because we're more than likely not taking down the Glammy Owl on our own, Air Cutter should be enough for the rest of the damage. And never mind, it got both of them. And it got a critical hit, I think, on both as well. Jeez, okay then. Well, town both of them go. <laughs> Jeez, that's a... Uh, there's super luck coming into effect there. Level 42 for Clayton, and actually now we can look at his stats. HP is quite high. Not much on the defense at the moment, but that's mostly because he has a negative on defense. And really low speed, but decent attack and decent um, just special defense in general. He's definitely a tank, so... He'll definitely still be able to work around all that, even with decreased defense. But the thing is, is Snorlax can learn Iron Defense, so it doesn't really matter then. But this is where I think we go Zen Headbutt. And then for the other one, um, let's just keep on with the Air Cutter. I think Morgan's doing pretty good with that. And it definitely is living up to its name. And Quick Guard, I believe, lowers. <laughs> that didn't do anything for the Glammeow. Jeez. Okay, whoever used um, the quick guard, that didn't do anything. Because <laughs> I was supposed to help both of you, and well, the other Pokemon went down instantly, and yep, Golbat went down too. Okay then. Well, that quick guard did not get used correctly. And uh, down you go. <laughs> sorry, but not sorry. Losing was a part of my job too. I feel better by saying that. Uh, I guess it is. You did say you're just here to stall us. You're too young to understand. And uh, no, I'm not too young, you're just too weird for thinking that making a new galaxy is gonna make things better. But, uh, yep, there's Mars. <laughs> Looks like Dawn's dealing with her. I'll knock your Pokémon into orbit. <laughs> I actually like that one. If this mission is successful, we will get a nice bonus. But it looks like Mars isn't inside of the actual middle of the lake, though. So maybe they haven't actually made it to where they need to be, which is good for us. So good thing Rowan and Dawn were here, because that makes things a little bit easier. But Beautifly and Stunky. I like how this one has an evolved Pokemon, but the other one doesn't, because I'm pretty sure Stunky evolves by now. But, uh, let's see here. We could go... No, Beautifly is flying, isn't it? So it doesn't really matter. So let's just go for Rock Tomb there. And then, for the other one, because we do have... Actually, you know what? Hmm. I guess it really doesn't matter, does it? Okay, well, uh... 
Hmm. Not really much that she can do, actually. Let's swap it up. Clayton's gonna do something different then. Okay, Stunky's dark type, so we can't do that. But we can go for a strength on Stunky. And then we can go for a Shadow Ball on Beautifly. Just to make it so both of them get to attack perfectly fine. Without any problems. We're not going for any super effective hits. But we still got the Beautifly. So that still works. And then level 44 for Morgan. And ooh, those are actually some decent stats. <laughs> I didn't get to fully look at the stats. But I already knew they were going to be better than our, our bugs. And yeah, bugs is way lower than those. But um, level 44 for Weston. We'll take that as well. And let's see here, Stunky, using Screech. You don't really need that on the Munchlax at the moment, but Clayton actually isn't scared of you, to be completely honest. So here's a strength. Sorry, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, level 32. Uh, you should be level 38, which I'm surprised you're not. But uh, yeah, down you go. Blame Meow. Okay, easy Pokemon to deal with. What's the another Blame Meow? Hmm. Okay then. Well, uh, double trouble. One one level higher than the other, but still something to um, think about. I'm gonna say strength still because we get same type attack boost, and then we go for a Giga Drain on the higher level Glamiow, I think. Because we knew that Roserade can get rid of the level 32 one already, because we fought another Glamiow already, but I wasn't sure if the one extra level was gonna give it enough HP to survive or not, and it seems like that's a no retaliates. Hmm. Well, uh, nice move, but uh, I'm pretty sure that only works if I hit you, to be honest. And, well, uh, Carmen didn't hit you, so sorry, but uh, I don't think that worked correctly. But, uh, down you go. My mind is going orbital. Yep, it is. <laughs> and you can go off um, into outer space, too. I'm heartbroken. Uh, sorry? For making you heartbroken? Okay then. Uh, hey Don, what's going on over here? Oh, Spooks, it's Tinko Lactag. Oh no, the Pokemon of the Lake. Yeah, but what about Mars? Oh, okay, there was a senior. Oh, that face. It brings back me bad memories. And talking about the Valley Windworks, I got a whole lot of trouble for that in little incident. <laughs> yeah, not sorry about that one. Um, what's with that look on your face? You do remember me, don't you? Well, I did, but seems like uh, Little Spooks here doesn't remember. Oh, fine, whatever. I'll tell you who I am again. Um, I am Mars, one of the Team Galactic Commanders. Um, how cute you two think you could save the day in your little game of hero. Not a chance. Not even a teeny one. You're all going down. Oh. Okay, well, looks like we actually do have ourselves a fight here. I was actually going to go swimming into the middle of the lake because we have Surf, but nope, looks like we can actually face off with Mars here. Okay, here we go, Golbat to start. Actually good for us, because the thing is, is Clayton and Nala are perfectly fine for Golbat here. So we actually have more than one option, which is nice. Also, we have Rock Tomb as well, other than the Zen Headbutt. But the Zen Headbutt is actually going to be more of a thing that would be better to use. One, it does more strength, it has more strength to it. As well as the fact that we can make it flinch, but that's if we attack first, while the other one slows. So, honestly, either work. And the thing is, is, although it's trying to go for poison, if we had the ability immunity, which we could, but the thing is, is we have thick fat, which makes it so we take less fire and ice damage, which is really good, um, we don't really need to worry as much. And also, Carmen got level thir uh, 46. Not bad whatsoever. And Carmen's actually a lot faster now, which is nice. And I think uh, Nala and Carmen are definitely our fastest Pokemon now, which is good because we needed something quite fast to, you know, fight some things. Because we dealt with that Gengar with uh, Fantina. And let's be honest here, we got lucky with that one. But, uh,. Thankfully, all we needed was Weston to evolve for that, but definitely could have been a lot more... It could have definitely went a lot more south if we didn't have Weston, for sure. But let's get Carmen out here. And the reason is, is because of Grass Knot. I feel like with uh, Grugly here, 
Grass Knot should do a lot of damage here, because the thing is, is Perugly is quite a heavy Pokemon, and Grass Knot works based off of just in general size of Pokemon. And you have a Sturst Berry, don't you? Yeah, you do. Hmm, okay. And you have Aerial Ace, what the? Why do you have Aerial Ace? That's like the weirdest move to have on a Perugly. But okay then. Uh, here, have another Grass Knot. <laughs> okay. I'm just more confused about the Aerial Ace than the Pokemon itself. But, uh, huh. Okay. Do you have anything? No, you don't. You don't have any heals. Good. Okay, so you don't have to worry about them healing out of nowhere. Down goes your signature Pokemon. Sorry, Mars, but, uh, Prugly's not gonna have a chance there. Okay, what's your next one? Bronzor again. Okay. So the other one had a Bronzor. So Toxic Croak 100% was Saturn's signature. Okay, so that confirms that. So it's not Bronzong, because this one also has Bronzor. Hmm. Okay, then. Well, good to know that they're going to have Bronzongs later. Probably for all of them. But because it is a Bronzor, we should probably be careful here. I'm going to say, let's go into Morgan. The reason why is, one, because I want to do a fight with Morgan. But the thing is, is that because of the dark typing, we should do perfectly fine here. So Bronzor can't use any psychic type moves on us, which is something it's definitely going to have. But the thing is, is now it's forced to only use steel type moves. And I wonder, can I steal anything from them? Nope. <laughs> but Gyro Ball. Okay. And that does nothing. Okay, good. And definitely got to like that leftovers I got for free. <laughs> I have two. I Oh no, I didn't get two of them. But I did get two Munchlaxes though. But I think, um... The reason why I didn't get another Leftovers, even though the Munchlax, the second one that I caught, had Leftovers as well, is the one that I caught second used Fling and threw the item, so it destroyed Leftovers on me. But uh, yeah, it's unfortunate, but we could have two right now if we really, um, if we got lucky. Which I don't know if I would use, but two Leftovers are pretty good on its own, to be honest. Oh, like again and again. 3,200, that's quite low, but okay. A little unfortunate. Oh, he lost again. So first it was Valley Windworks, and now it's like Verity that he owe you for. This shouldn't be happening to Team Galactic's commander. Oh, calm down, Mars. I'm done. I've done my part of all, in all of this mission. My mission was to transport the latest Pokemon to our HQ. Okay, oh, so that's why you're out here. That's right, I accomplished my mission, without a problem. Um, team, we're pulling out. The boss is waiting at the HQ. The Pokemon of the Three Lakes are connected somehow. Thanks to Saturn's grand sitting at Lake Valor, a cavern appeared here. It was the cavern um, where the Pokemon Mesprit slept. Mesprit appeared to, probably, to go help its friends. That worked out well for us. It was super easy to catch. So now, we've got them all. Mesprit the being of emotion, Azelf the being of willpower, and Yuxi the being of intelligence. Now that we all have all three, you can look forward to what Team Galactic has in store for them. Okay then. And it's actually nice that um, the actual, like, triple, the trio legendaries are actually part of the story. Because the thing is, is they don't really do that as much nowadays in these games. Look at Thunderous, Landorus, and Tornadus. They barely were connected to the main story. Although, technically, it's four of them now, isn't it? Because now there's a thing called Eternatus, which is a fairy type. If I'm, Or no, Enamorous, that's it. Yeah, Enamorous. A uh, fairy flying, I believe. I've never caught one yet. I haven't gotten that far in Pokemon uh, Legends to even think about anything like that, but apparently that's a thing, which is interesting. But yeah, definitely interesting for the for a fourth of that trio, to be honest, because I really thought there was only only three to begin with, and apparently there's more. I don't know if there's any more past that, but uh, yeah, definitely weird. But let's continue, though. Hmm, I see. This has all occurred at Lake Vala. Another legendary Pokemon was taken away by Team Galactic. Both of you went up against a full-fledged crim criminals 
The fact that you, you're unharmed is reason enough to celebrate. But we haven't seen Barry though. But what about Lake Akidi? Is Barry safe? Good question. And I'm guessing that's where we're headed next. But we did hear that Veilstone is somewhere where, where we should head. But it looks like we're more worried about going to Lake um, Akidi. But the thing is, is they said they, they already secured all three of them. So there really is no reason to go there, though. But making sure Barry's okay is definitely a reason. But that would mean that something something might have happened to Barry then, if that's the case, if he hasn't shown back up yet. Unless he went back on his gym challenge, because there is a gym in Snowpoint. So probably either one would work, but okay. Mm -mm, spooks, I need you to go to Lake, Bar Lake Akiti right away. I'm, a wo I'm worried about Barry. What about you, Don? Oh, Spooks, what is Team Galactic up to? Are the Pokemon they took from the lakes going to be okay? Good question. And because we do have the option to do this, let's jump into the water real quick. Just so I can show you where the cave is, because they brought it up. They're all in the middle, so might as well check it out. Just because we were told about it. But this is Verity's cavern here. All have different little symbols. Don't know why they have different symbols, but they all do, kind of like the Reggies, which is weird. But it does make sense at the same time because of the Reggies. But because of that, we're definitely done here. So let's make our way right on out of here and use good old fly and get us closer to where we should be heading. I think Celestic Town would be a decent place because, you know, we did learn about the the legends um, of the lakes inside Celestic Town, so I think it's probably a good place to, you know, start off our journey to Lake Akadi, since that's definitely our next plan. And the only thing is, is are we actually going to make it to Lake Akadi by the end of today's episode? That's a good question, because it looks like the route to Snowpoint in Akadi is actually quite decently long, so I guess we'll find out that question very soon. But, um, I think, uh, good old Clayton here is actually doing really good on, uh, friendship by this, by this point. Clayton wants to move faster and is tugging at you. <laughs> he's definitely not running too fast, but yeah, he's doing decent. <laughs> well, let's see here. Route 211. So this is going to take us to where we want to go. And it looks like it's a decently long route. And I actually want to grab this Petcha Berry, just in case. Anything for that's... Oh, actually, we should take Aspir Berries. Those would actually be nice. Those are for frozen status. That could be really decent. But the thing is, is there anything for friendship? Because the thing is, is you can drop effort values for friendship. It's 10, specifically per berry. But it is a way for you to build competitive Pokemon a little bit easier in some games. Um, because of these berries. And yep, there is definitely some here. I'm going to throw one in there just in case for later. But um, we're definitely going to use one on Clayton here. We're going to drop a little bit of our special defense uh, EVs, which basically is just one stat. It's not much, but it's something that will make thing, things a little bit easier for gaining friendship. Because those berries definitely build friendship, and it's quite a decent amount based on what I remember. And of course, Ponyta. Ponyta and you do. The, the Pokemon that are definitely the thorn in my side when it comes to trying to find new things on new routes. But the thing is, is technically we can go to this route normally. So it makes sense that there's a Ponyta here. But it it is a little unfortunate. Actually, no wait. No, you can't. Because you can't make it to Celestic Town without going through the Psyducks. I just thought of that. I'm trying to remember why that reasoning is. But let's take on this uh, this guy here, just because I want to. Haha, <laughs> I'm psyched for this. Here goes. Oh, okay, here goes indeed. So what do you got? Do you actually have fighting type Pokemon? Because we fought some uh, black belts that had some steel types inside uh, Byron's gym. And you have a crow gun, which is technically fighting. So, okay. The only thing is, is his anticipation sees our Zen headbutt. <laughs> Although he doesn't know which move it is. Sucker Punch? Uh, yeah, that did not do good for you. I'm gonna be honest there, bud. 
So here's the Zen headbutt. And down you go. <laughs> you saw something that was super effective, you just didn't know what I was going to use. Because it doesn't tell you what move they're going to use, it just lets you know there's a super effective one. Level 44 for Alice, thank you. Ooh, Moonblast, that's a nice thing. I'll definitely say that. Okay, so let's see here. Yeah, that's just pretty much better. So, uh, Dazzling Gleam, we're getting rid of you for Moonblast. I think that's also a single target, so that's gonna be better, because double target things can be a little weird in team battles sometimes. Sometimes you just want to get rid of the Pokemon you're dealing with. So, going in for Metatite. Technically, we're weak to fighting type Pokemon with Clayton here, but the thing is, is Clayton's got a lot of HP, so I don't think he really needs to worry. But Detect. The thing is, is... Technically, Meditite didn't need to use... Oh, wait, you're level 27, aren't you? Wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe you do. <laughs> I guess it didn't really matter what we did to you then. I was being more selective with my, my selections here, but it doesn't seem like we need to worry about any of that. Okay, so we might need to just stay away from trainers then for this route. Because the thing is, is let's be honest here, we're not going to get much from these trainers at this point. If we were to fight them earlier, then yeah. But, yeah, let's be honest here, this is more for money at this point, but we'll see what happens. Focus energy for a crit. Technically, if we throw a focus energy onto uh, Morgan, it would make our crits happen even more often as well. Maybe a thing, uh, food for thought, definitely, but the thing is, is are we going to get it, <laughs> is the real question. But, sorry bud, but uh, I don't get why we can't win. Uh, more levels, probably. And you didn't even give much money either. Oof. Okay then. So yeah, stay away from the trainers then. But, oh, wait a minute. Wasn't this the route with the... Oh, I think I know where we are. Oh, so that's why. Okay. <laughs> Looks like we're going back into good old Mount Cornet. And the reason was, was because of the boulder here. I forgot about these. So that's why we haven't been able to do much. And also, what am I doing? <laughs> I was about to say we need to use strength here. Forgot you don't have to go into your bag. I was so used to that for like the old games where you have to actually, you know, one, make sure your Pokemon has strength or something of the sorts. Oh, that was, that was an, okay, I didn't remember what I was doing. I was get, trying to get a repel ready because I don't know... If we're going to run into anything new, but we need to use Defog here, because I cannot see a thing. So, let's Defog this area. Thank you, Staraptor, for being wild Pokemon, and turning us into a Pokemon Ranger for a second, because we're definitely going to need a little bit of that, because a little bit of uh, being able to see things is definitely nice every now and then. And a bag of Stardust. Ooh, free money. <laughs> I'll take some treasures. That definitely is quite nice to have. Okay, we have two options. We can either go over here. Ooh, hello, Pokeball. Usually an item behind a puzzle is worth going for. So let's actually check this out real quick. Because there might be something in there that we might want to grab. You never know. So let's definitely see. What is hiding in the Pokeball? Soft Sand. That is the item that increases ground type damage, if I remember correctly. Nice to see that we're finally getting battle items. It took us quite a while to get something after fighting a bunch of trainers with battle items, might I say. So, definitely good that, you know, we're getting stuff like that now because it's kind of unfortunate that we were fighting things with that kind of power. Ooh, hey, actually a new Pokemon. Okay, then I was about to say maybe we need to use a Repel, but... We actually found, uh, well, not a new Pokemon, quote-unquote, but new compared to everything else we've been seeing. Um, I'm wondering, can we use a Ultra Ball here and just catch you? I think the Fairy has a low catch rate, but because of the levels, I think, think it increases by a little bit. And you have a way of healing yourself, so there's no point in even doing any damage to you. Let's just try and catch you with an Ultra Ball here is honestly our best bet here, to be completely honest. Because, let's be honest here, if it's going to heal itself, there's no point. But, we got ourselves a Clefairy. Cool. And, honestly, decent uh, levels. 
for just experience for a while Pokemon, but Clefairy's data will now be added to the Pokedex. Clefairy, the fairy Pokemon, type fairy, height 2, 16.5 pounds. Also, I'm, I also think it's funny that Clefairy actually became a fairy type Pokemon instead of a normal type Pokemon because it used to be a normal type, and now actually having a whole different typing for it is quite interesting because of all the things with fairy type Pokemon. Thought to live with others on quiet mo mountains. It is popular for its adorable nature. Hmm, okay then. Also, Pokemon number 100, which is kind of interesting too. So he literally found the 100th entry of the Pokedex for Sinnoh. Huh, pretty nice. Uh, because I'm pretty sure we're not going to run into anything too specific that we need to worry about. I'm actually going to throw on a repel here, just because... I'm pretty sure because of the fact that we saw Graveler, we're going to be seeing goal, um, just Gravelers and Golbats everywhere. Let's definitely take a look around, because we don't know our exact way out of here. Oh, forgot. <laughs> we don't have to use Strength again. <laughs> it just stays on instantly for the rest of after we use it once. As well as Rock Smash. That also does it. Oh, well, sometimes. I still have to go through Yes, but it's still nice to be able to just press A and it just does it. <laughs> instead of having to go through the whole animation and using Rock Smash again. So it's definitely nice. Although we do have normal repel, so we don't have much of a, you know, time of staying away from Pokemon. It's still 22 of them. But, yeah, definitely we do need to be careful with our steps here, because we're running all the time, instead of, you know, slow walking like we they would do in the original. So, ooh. Okay, well I was thinking that there might be an item here, but I wasn't too sure on that, but a rare candy. Okay, so that was weird. I don't know what happened, but my entire uh, software for recording ended up uh, freaking out after grabbing that rare candy. I don't know what happened. My audio was still recording and everything was still moving correctly in the video for you guys, but my whole screen turned black. I don't know what happened there. Uh, that was odd. That's the first time I've ever seen that happen. Uh, well, actually, no, this happened one other time, but it's only happened after I did something else. Uh, it, I was trying to, like, lower size on my computer. Um, and, yeah, it's definitely weird. I need to fix that because I know what the error is. I just need to fix it. It's just weird that it, isn't, it hasn't happened since, and it's been, like, almost a month since that's happened. So it's weird. So it's not like something pressing, but it's still weird that it happens. But here we are, Route 216, already here. Hmm. Okay then, I thought that was going to be a longer journey inside Mount Cornet. But uh, let's see here. Okay, so we got through a good chunk of our path here, which is good. So we can either go left, or we can go up here. Hmm, curious, okay. Well, first things first is, what is this guy? This guy's doing 360s <laughs> left and right. I want to fight him, honestly. Also, we don't need that repel anymore, but jeez, that guy's going crazy. He t he turned into Yosuke from Persona 4 <laughs> during the, the what do you call it, event, uh, the, this, or well, I should say Persona 4 Golden, because that event's not in the original. But uh, honestly, huh, interesting. I'm fully kitted up and equipped. Any time will be fine. Okay, hmm. any time will be fine indeed. So, also nice hair. <laughs> but here we go. Good old Laura. Ace Trainer. Oh, it's an Ace Trainer as well. Okay then. So, here we go. Snow version of an Ace Trainer. And they have... Oh, hey, nice little bunny. <laughs> but uh, because it is in a area that it is snowing, we're going to be dealing with hail now. Which can be bad, but, can, but it can also be good too. So... The only thing is, is it depends if we're fighting anything that's ice type. Then the hail is going to be bad against us. But if we're taking damage and they're taking damage, it doesn't matter as much. And also, that's a nice crit. <laughs> but there's the hail doing all it needs to do. And if they didn't use baby doll eyes there, we actually would have gotten that low honey in the first hit there because of the crit. So, a little unfortunate. And and look at that. I told you the hail could be good. The hail ended up getting the Lopunny out of the fight, although we still take the hail damage, which is only like 10, which is not that bad. 
level 43 for Clayton, not bad whatsoever, as well as down goes the Ace Trainer, just like so. Um, huh? Uh, okay, that's not really bad of a- Okay, well, huh indeed. Anything else after that though? Perhaps I should maybe change into a more comfy outfit. Uh, I think you should probably stay in your snowsuit, it is kinda hailing here. Probably not the smartest thing to take off your snowsuit, but just gonna be honest there. But it looks like we have to go this way. Um, I'm curious, what do you got? To be ready to answer the call, to be ready to accept any challenge. That is the way of a trainer. Okay, well, let's see what you got. The reason why I wanted to fight them was because we didn't fight really much of anything inside of Mount Cornet. We haven't really had a real adventure in Mount Cornet. I thought we would by now, just because I thought it's basically like the Mount Moon of this game. But it's weird that we haven't really done anything in it, which is weird. Okay, Golduck is Water Psychic, so it doesn't really matter because we're not really in much of a problem here and if we just avoided Fury Swipes. That's it's not much, but it's still something. We could get hit five times and then it would be bad, but that Golduck didn't even hit us, which is weird. Clayton's not that fast, so us dodging something is quite funny. And here comes Aqua Jet, which actually didn't do as much damage as I thought it would. Okay, well, down goes Golduck. I wonder, because the turn hasn't ended yet, do we still take the damage? I'm pretty sure we do. Yep, we do. Okay. I was I was I wasn't sure. So that confirms that for me. Okay, Sudowudo. Sudowudo rock type, we keep running into it, so we don't really need to worry. Well Bonsley we keep running into, honestly. But Sudowudo is definitely a ground er gra a rock type. <laughs> I wanted to say ground and then I almost said grass then. The things went everywhere, but, uh, let's see here. Giga Drain is a for sure knockout, so I think that's probably our smartest option. Also, I think it's weird that the trainers are lower level than the last gym leader. Isn't that odd? I wonder what the case with that is, because you would think they would be about the same level for the most part, but they're, like, at least, like, five levels under them. A level 45 for Nala, not bad. Any kind of uh, experience at levels is definitely going to be good the further and further we get, especially with the fact that the seventh gym leader is our next opponents when it comes to our gym challenge. So we definitely do need to be careful. Also, Ponyta on a snow route. That's quite odd. <laughs> well, uh, interesting. But, uh, yeah, kind of weird at the same time. Just because of the fact that, you know, it's Ponyta on the snow route. So, kind of odd there. But uh, we can always go for Brian and, you know, <laughs> take out Ponyta pretty easily. But it's, yeah, that is odd. Just in general, you'd think this trainer would be on a different route entirely based on their Pokemon. Because Golduck and Ponyta don't make any sense here. But Ace Trainer and Marina, down you go. How disappointing. Also, I like their little animation for their face. <laughs> But yeah, sorry. Sorry, but not sorry at the same time. You can make all the preparations in the world, but if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. True, I guess? Huh. Okay then. What's this? Snowbound Lodge. A warm bed and a little else. Ooh, hello, Pokemon Center. <laughs> I'll be taking that. No reason not to, right? It's 100% a place where we can stay. Yep, I'll be taking that bed. I'm a Definitely get some sleep there, because let's be honest there, poor Munchlax took a big beating. Feel free to take a power nap in that bed. As you can see, this lodge is simply furnished. Um, do you do what you like here? Okay, well thanks. <laughs> that was definitely nice. Uh, let's see here. We could probably take on this trainer here. I always battle for keeps. This is no drill. I guess, yeah, it's no drill indeed. What do you got for us, bud? Ace Trainer Garrett. There's a bunch of Ace Trainers on this route. Well, the thing is, is their Pokemon don't really match up with this route. Mr. Mime is definitely something I didn't expect in this route at all, but it's definitely something we can easily deal with. Although it is a Fairy Psychic type now, and not just a Psychic type, but he did Baton Pass, and he's going straight into Macho, which is kind of terrifying. But we already fought a Machoke that was about the same level earlier, so let's be honest here. We're perfectly fine. As long as it's not me lean, we'll definitely be fine. 
just geek because her matchup before the uh, Lucario was definitely terrifying. But the thing is, is at the same time, there's no Lucario after this, is there? So, or at least I don't think there would be. But let's be honest here, I'm not terrified until I see a new, another Lucario or a Gengar. Or maybe we'll find another Pokemon we're terrified of in the near future, but I don't think that's going to be from a random Pokemon trainer, for the most part. If it wasn't a random Pokemon trainer, then I would be a little bit more terrified. But, yeah, the that Gengar from Fantina and Maylene's Lucario were definitely forces to be reckoned with. Because, yeah, I was not ready for them, for sure. But level 45 for Weston. Cool, cool, cool. And specifically, we got that for the Pokemon that actually beat Gengar, too, which is pretty funny. Uh, Sneasel. Oh, that's the first evolution. Okay, we're perfectly fine. <laughs> well, technically, nowadays, uh, Sneasel has two evolutions, but we don't have to worry about this one. And technically, it depends on the form, too, because Weavile doesn't exactly exist on the secondary form of Sneasel now. But it's still pretty cool, just because of the fact that there is multiple options now. Because now you have, what was it, Poison Fighting for Sneasler, as well as Weavile being uh, Dark Ice, right? I think so, or Dark Steel, I actually forgot. It's been so long since I've used Weavile, but I do like the Pokemon though. Good John, that was an excellent battle, and you look frozen solid. You should get on into that lodge there, bud. You definitely need it. It's right next to you, too. So, that probably would help you. Oh, Metatite. Still more surprised that we're seeing so many Metatites in this game. Just because of the fact that, you know, it's more of a Hoenn Pokemon, but it's still interesting to see it. Well, because I already have one, don't really need it. Oh, we're still in the fight. That's surprising. Hmm. I thought we would be able to run out of that fight, but... Nope. <laughs> Did not look like that was going to be the option. And also, there we go. Okay, cool. I wasn't sure if we were going to get out of the second one. But I think we're not going to be able to get into, like, Akidi in today's episode, but we will get out of this route first for today's episode. I will make sure we finish this. This cold is but nothing compared to the fire that burns in my heart. <laughs> Your fire burns, I see. Okay, well, we'll get you a theme song for that one. <laughs> Ace Trainer Dalton. Okay, what do you got? Raichu. Ooh, I like that. Even if it doesn't match the route, I do like the Raichu. <laughs> okay then. So let's see here. What do you got with your Raichu though? The thing is, is we could still go for Bulldoze here. It'd be perfectly fine. And actually, I think it's the first time our Bulldoze will actually come to effect. Special type moves. Is Bulldoze physical? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. So that doesn't really matter. So... Sorry, Raichu, but down you go. Didn't get to see it long, but at least we got to see it. Level 47 for Carmen. Ooh, Morgan's about to level up too. Thing is, is for Morgan, we need a Dusk Stone. So it's going to be a while until we can evolve that. But Hippopotas, ooh, hello. Uh, well, I know it's perfectly fine against you. <laughs> Let's just swap right into Carmen here, because that's 100% what we need to do. But the thing is, is because it's not hit pound on, it's not too dangerous, but it's still a Pokemon nonetheless. And now it's no longer, uh, no, <laughs> no longer uh, blizzarding here, which is a little odd. But uh, okay, well you completely changed the surroundings of this area, bud. But honestly, it's kind of cool at the same time. But uh, I don't think we need to really worry about that sand stream much, just because one, it's kind of gonna affect both of us now. I'm pretty sure. Level 45 for Morgan. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Foul Play. That is... Hmm, is that better? Yeah, it is. It's definitely better. Use your target's power against it. Or, use your turns, the power target's power against it. The higher ta target's attack stat, the greater the damage it deals. It's also 95 power, just in general. Um, we really don't need Mean Look. If we were fighting something that can run away, like Abra, then Mean Look would be good, but I don't think there's anything like that in this game. Because the... I don't think the Lake Spirits do that in this game. 
Because normally the, the traveling trio Pokemon do that kind of stuff, but that wasn't in the first game for the Kanto region. It was something for Johto, and it was something for Hoenn, for Latios and Latios. But I don't think we have to worry about that in this game. So, okay. Ooh. <laughs> I'll take the mean look going away, but I really don't think we need to worry about it at all, just to be honest. And because the Pelipper is a water flying type, it kind of takes out our super effectiveness attacks. But we still can fight this Tailwind. Now it's faster than us because of Tailwind. But uh, the Sandstorm's not doing it any favors. And if it does have any flying type moves, I'm pretty sure Hurricane doesn't do good in Sandstorms. But Air Slash is a different thing. Because the thing is, is Hurricane, I think, has a 100% chance of hitting inside rain. And that's more of something you would use for a Pelipper. That's why I said that. Because that's more of a staple move for any kind of like Pelipper. Because that's more of something you want to do. I think, if I remember correctly, there's a hidden ability is the reason why, is because he can force rain on the field or something, if I remember correctly. It's been so long since I built a Pelipper, but level 45 for Alice, we'll take that. And down goes Dalton. Sorry, bud. <laughs> Looks like you're freezing too. Go over to the launch, bud. Your heart burns as hot as mine. Uh, you're not really doing too hot in, this, in the cold here, so I don't think your heart's too hot at the moment. <laughs> Um, I'm curious, can I use Defog here? No, I can't. Okay. I was wondering because it was quite, uh, you know, blizzardy here. I was kind of wondering if we... Oh, that's a... I noticed it at the last second. Um, poof. You've got a good eye spot in me. Eh, not really. I thought, um, I got, thought you were a rock at first and I was thinking, ooh, free item. And then I realized it was a ninja kid by the time I was right next to him. Little unfortunate. But Zubat? Really? Zubat? Hmm. Uh. Okay. Okay, Zubat. <laughs> Obviously you're faster than me because Clayton has like 50 speed. So he's definitely not outspeeding much. But there is still Pokemon that are still slower than Munchlax, let's be honest here. So there's no real worry there for the most part. But we are still going to take uh, hail damage, though, which is not too bad. But the reason why we keep using Munchlax, one, because he's perfectly fine for fights, which is good. But two is because we need to get that Soothe Bell built up as much as possible. Because that'll definitely help out our little buddy here. And Toxic and Hail is actually a really bad combo here. Uh-oh. <laughs> that could be bad, because the longer you have poison, the more damage you take. He's already quite low, so this is actually going to be like two turns or three turns till Clayton's down for the counts, depending. Let's see here, how much damage do we take from Poison at the moment? 10. So it's going to be about 20. I think it doubles each time, if I remember correctly, on the exact amount. But the thing is, is Golbao outspeeds us, but do we take damage from him? We do. We take Poison Fang. Okay, well, we don't get- okay, well, I was about to say we might get Zen Headbutt off, but we take Hail, we take Poison, Clayton's down, for sure. Unless- nope, okay, I was about to say maybe Friendship makes him survive, but nope, down goes Clayton. Sorry, buddy. But that's not the worst case scenario, because we do have the Magna on Nala, and we haven't used Nala today, so you know what? Let's use her, let's use her to our advantage, because Nala- is quite terrifying for other Pokemon, to be honest. And let's be honest here, a spark is probably all we need to be completely fair here. And down goes Golbat. Sorry, buddy, but ooh, nice, uh, nice critical there. And we also built some friendship because of the critical too. <laughs> I'll take that. That's pretty nice. And also, friendship increases crit chance. Hmm, that's good to know because of the fact that we have Super Luck on Murkrow. So we should heavily boost our friendship very soon then, if that's the case. Because, <laughs> let's be honest here, we're going to hit a lot of crits in the very near future with with Morgan here, and I'm definitely in for that ride. 
because criticals in these games, I love, or not just Pokemon, critical stats in video games is something I always like to focus on, and being able to focus, actually have full focus on critical on a Pokemon is actually really nice, because that is something I focus completely on in other video games when it comes to RPGs and stuff like that. Orderlands, anything in general, if I could build crit, I always like to build it. Just look at the Mario & Luigi game that we did. The the stash we built in that game was huge, and we got a lot of crits. You also saw through my weak spots. Yep, sorry buddy, and jeez, $500 for fight you was not worth. I'm gonna be honest there. Let's slowly make our way through the snow here. Taking a lot of uh, speed drops because of the, the, the just amount of snow piled up here. And there's an item over here, let's grab that. Surprise there's no Pokemon attacking us in here, just because you would think there might be hiding stuff hiding here. There's also another ninja trainer over there, but what's inside this house? Just because I'm curious. The house in the middle of the, the hail is kind of odd. While I was fighting my way through the blizzard, I dropped a TM. It had the move Rock Climb. TM Rock Climb? Okay, we're looking for Rock Climb now. Is this it? Oh, it is. TM Rock Climb. That's uh, definitely our hidden move, isn't it? Because, yep. And we keep seeing it everywhere. Rock Climb in the Hidden Moves app allows you to move rapidly to the top of rugged cliff sides. Good thing we came over this way then. Because um, that was entirely lucky that we did that because we were over here. And I was just making sure we were going like this so I could kind of see both sides of this place. And that is quite lucky. But I do see another house over here, cause, so I'm quite curious to see what's in here. So let's see here. What's in the second house? Because the first house was good. <laughs> Hello. What's going on with you? A person. A rare sight. Thank you for visiting. A gift. A spell tag. Isn't spell tag for ghost type Pokemon? I'm pretty sure it is. Let's see here. Because I, I think I'm remembering that. Yeah, it is. Okay. It's a sinister eerie tag that boosts the power of ghost type poke or type moves. I'm pretty sure this is more than the ghost plate we're using. So let's throw the spell tag on. Just because we are using the shadow ball a lot, to be honest. <laughs> There's no reason not to, right? Might as well use as much as we possibly can. And I think this is the Glaceon rock, I think. The boulder is encrusted with ice. It is bone chilling to the touch. Just because Glaceon and Leafeon, we ran into the Leafeon one a long time ago, but uh, Glaceon and Leafeon didn't get their evolutions until this game. <laughs> and, oh, I thought I could get past this guy. To make sure I'm more agile, I always dress light. Okay, well, uh, I hope you have uh, some Ice-type Pokemon to back that up, because I kind of want to see an Ice-type trainer at the current moment with everything we've been dealing with. I'm pretty sure that if we were to fight any of the snowboarders, I'm pretty sure they would obviously have ice types. It's just odd that you would think that they would, for the most part, have ghost type moo or not ghost type, but ice type Pokemon on the on the route in general. But the reason why I said ghost type moves is because I was gonna use Shadow Ball. <laughs> but uh Yeah, definitely it is odd. Because it's been the case with every other route. Everything's been, like, same typing to the route or something similar. Like, you know, like, either uh, for the rock-type areas, we've been fighting gravelers and stuff like that. And just in general, it seemed like it was very specifically paying attention to everything. And this Shadow Ball is definitely getting some use. No reason not to, right? It's Shadow Ball. It's definitely going to be good. And also, it can drop special defense, too, if I remember correctly, so it's definitely, you know, a good move in general, with the fact that we have the spell tag. We don't have anything for grass-type moves yet, so that's the reason why. And yeah, I was right, special defense. <laughs> but yeah, uh, grass dot for you should be pretty good. So let's just uh, tie you down, and you have sturdy, don't you? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you do. Yep, there we go. Okay, first time we've seen a, an Onyx or a Geo dude in a long time with a with the movie sturdy with the ability sturdy. So yeah, the hail didn't really save you there. You only got a damage in, and then you got knocked flat. So sorry, but yeah, they didn't do much for you. Um, a chew. 
you should probably wear something, um, uh, not so light, bud. You did say you always like to dress light. I might have to go home and dress warmer than this. Yeah, probably a smarter idea. Okay, Route 217 to Lake Hackety. Okay, we're almost there. Once we get to the front of Lake Hackety, I think we'll be good to end off today's episode. Um, what? What is it? Pokemon battle? Uh, sure. Did you want something else? It sounded like you wanted something else here. But here we go, another ace trainer. A lot of ace trainers on this route. And you have the previous evolution of our Pokemon. This is gonna be interesting. Um, uh, I'll be honest here, I don't think you have a chance. But, maybe you do. You never know. Uh, but, uh, you're gonna eat a Shadow Ball and you're probably gonna like it. I'm gonna be honest here. So, uh, see you later. If we had, if we had a Poison-type move, that would be nice. Ooh, we got another critical for friendship. Ooh. <laughs> but, yeah, if we got, uh, if we could swap out Grass Knot or Toxic for Poison-type moves, I'd maybe swap out Grass Knot if we get, like, Vino Shock. That would be good, because we have Toxic, and that would make it do a lot more damage. But the thing is, is we don't have that, so I can't really do that. But if we did have it, it would be nice. Sea King. That's water. Oh, no, 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 it's not. I was thinking, um, Sphelio's evolution. But no, Sea King is definitely a water... What is it? Water Psychic? So this is this should be fine to just go Giga Drain and d done you right down and get you on out of here. Although your Psychic typing could have been scary. But uh, thanks for the free heal, because we got all our HP back. So down goes Sea King, and we're perfectly safe. <laughs> we'll take that. Level 46 for Nala. Really good. Defense is now in the hundreds now, which is also good. Um, ooh. You are alive, aren't you? Yep. What about you? Because you don't look too good at the current moment. Uh, we should probably check on you. Around these parts, perhaps because of all the snow, there are many folk tales about hauntings. Hmm. So that's maybe why you're asking if we're alive. Oh, and here we are at the lakefront. And we found a Pokemon, which I was not preparing for. And ooh, Metacham. I like Metacham, but uh, we're going to have to say no to that right now because... I'm more worried about ending off today's episode now, because obviously we've done quite a lot. So let's leave the meta cham for later. And honestly, thank y'all for watching today's episode. Have a wonderful rest of your day. In the next episode, we will be continuing our hunt for the Team Galactic members here. And also trying to find out where Barry is, because I'm quite worried about him, actually. And maybe even getting to go to Snowpoint City in the next one. So... Or we might be going back to Veilstone for the Team Galactic hideout. But with that being said, thank y'all for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Keep being spooky. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out. Hey, boys and girls. Thank y'all for watching today's episode. If you liked what you saw today, please leave a like and maybe even subscribe. And hit the bell notification down below. If you guys have any kind of suggestions for games, please put that in the comments down below as well. Thank y'all for watching today's episode. And keep being spooky. Peace out, guys.